Yeah, so last week we just started uh, the very last part of um, market structures. Yeah, so finally uh, we are in the final uh, market structure that we want to investigate and that is oligopoly. Okay, and once again, uh, it's, it's very important that you you know the assumptions for each of the market structure. And here, once again, when you look at the screen, you see oligopoly is pretty much quite similar to uh, monopoly. Okay, because because when you when you look at the spectrum here, it is it, yeah, it's pretty close to uh, monopoly. So you will see the assumptions that we made for oligopoly. Look, there are only a few number of large firms, okay? Yeah, so they are the biggest firms competing each other. Okay, and, and, and that's why you will see some very high barriers to entry. Okay, so not so many uh competitors if they want to get into the market, they you know, they they can do it because yeah, you would not be able to survive. And also, yeah, you you know, here is pretty much the same as a monopoly. You know, the products can be uh, differentiated or uh, identical. Okay, because the market power is just too big. All right. But the most important thing about oligopoly is this one here. Once again, yeah, because we are going to put so much focus on this assumption here, the mutual interdependence. Okay, because we know. Okay, even though it's, it's, it's like monopoly, all right? But now we assume there are a few very big firms in the market, okay? And, and that's why they are always interdependent, okay? Because whatever decision that, that you make, you have to consider, you know, how your opponent is going to react, okay? Otherwise, you, there will be some huge impact to your business. Okay, so so that's why you know I I used uh, the example of um, Free Kingdom last time, yeah, and also the example of chess uh, last uh, last time because it's just like playing a game if you are in uh, oligopoly, okay. Unlike uh, living in in perfect competitions or or monopolistic competition where you know you can you can you can just run your business independently because there are just so many competitors in those markets and you, you know you you don't have much market power so you just work independently you don't need you don't, you don't even need to need uh to think about you know how people will react to your action okay but oligopoly is is different okay right and monopoly there should be no interdependence because you know you are the only one in the market all right yeah and uh, yeah yeah we we talk about uh some some examples here okay uh, and yeah, so let's move on. So yeah, those are the examples. Okay, right. But here, I want you to think about this. Okay, so here uh, we have two things. Yeah, you have mahjong. You have uh, drama. Okay, I'm pretty sure you are quite familiar with drama because we we do have drama classes, right? When you were uh, in the juniors, right? Yeah. So can you just try to try to an identify if 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 they are cooperative or competitive game yeah so so in, in terms of a game okay right what kind of game is is a mahjong what kind of game is is a drama any ideas comments Uh, yeah, that's true, right? Drama, okay. You know, if you should remember what 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 you did like a few years before, okay. You know, usually you form in groups and then you um you know try to come up with a common uh, objective. You're trying to make a drama, right? That's cooperative, okay. You you know you can see when 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 it comes to a cooperative game, you are aiming for one common goal. Okay, there's one common objective that you all in the group you are trying to achieve. But what about Mahjong? Or you, yeah, it, it sh should be competitive, right? Because you know you have four players, 
and each of the player they they just want to win uh you know the most money okay right uh so here is just a simple question anyone who who doesn't know how to play mahjong could could you just press 1 in the chat if you don't know how to play oh god four yeah anymore if you don't know how to play mahjong please one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Wow. So I assume. I I I will assume most of you don't know how to play Mahjong. But yeah, I would say like, look. Try to learn it. Okay, it's it's going to be good for you in the future. All right, when you see your, you know, father or mother-in-law. Yeah, you know, Mahjong is a good diplomacy. Okay, you need that. All right, so um, yeah, but you know, it, it's it's a very fun game, okay? Because you know, you, you it's, it's not just uh, you know like a um, silly game, but you you really have to use your brain, okay? Even even studies show that if you if you play mahjong, okay, you are you you will you will improve, okay, the symptom of uh, Al Alzheimer's disease, okay? So that that is a very good game, I, I suppose. All right, so you know, yeah, yeah. Try to learn that, okay? Sometimes, yeah. And also, you know, it's the Chinese culture, so I guess it's it's always good to learn that. All right, yeah. But you know what? I would say they can be both cooperative or competitive game. Yeah. Okay. But when when it comes to drama, how does it become competitive game? How does it become a competitive game? Yeah. Think about drama. Because we we know, yeah, it's it's supposed to be a cooperative game, right? But how, yeah, but there 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 should be some competitive element, uh, in drama as well. But can you tell me, what is that competitive element in drama? Anyone? Come on. I mean, drama can be also competitive, right? Any comments? Another thing? Wait, Michelle? What, 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 what was that? I, I was talking about, you know, drama. Yeah, like drama. Like, like why? Why there, why there is also some competitive element in, in drama? Well, it could be during casting, or even you know during uh, the shooting of, of of the drama, okay? Because you know when you when you, when you think about this, okay, some some actors, right? They may want to uh, stand out from the others, right? Because you, you know you, sometimes you, we 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 have uh, those uh, like uh, the best actor awards or you know things like that, okay? So some 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 actors they they might try their best. You know, to become the best uh, actor among you know all the people inside the drama, okay. So you 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 can imagine it 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 can become a competitive game, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, you, you know, from time to time you will see some people. You know, yeah, they believe they are the best actor uh, among you know the people in the group. So you they you will see some very exaggerating. Uh, acting, okay, you know things like that, right? So yeah, like deep down, even even in a cooperative game, you will see some competitive element, 
Okay, even mahjong. Yeah, mahjong can be cooperative, right? But but now I suppose you don't know how to play mahjong. But uh, yeah, but but you you can make it a cooperative game, because when you are playing mahjong, okay, you can cooperate with your opponents. Yeah, because you know when you're playing the mahjong, you can see uh, you know what kind of pattern that that they are uh, trying to make. Okay, so if you are you know trying to follow uh, uh, the patterns, so you you are giving them the pattern that they want, then you are helping them win the game. Okay, so as as yeah yeah well, but I'm not going to go into details since you you don't you don't you don't know how to play it. Okay, but but you will see. All right, it can be a cooperative game. Okay, as long as you know some players they agree. So if I help you win the game, let's split the money. Yeah, if that's the case, then mahjong can be a cooperative game as well. Okay, so sometimes uh, you you can call that cheating. Yeah, right. So usually if you go to a, a mahjong uh, facility. Uh, for that, yeah, people say if you are being caught, then you know you have to lift a finger, okay, right? Because you know, that's that's the common rule, okay. If you are being busted, then yeah, someone will chop one of your fingers, yeah, okay. So don't do that, right? Okay. So 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 you see here, okay, when we talk when we talk about games, it can be. You know, usually cooperative or competitive, but you will see okay, for so many games, yeah, there, there, there is no such dis distinction between cooperative and competitive. It all depends on, you know, how the people uh, uh, act. Okay, all right, to determine if that is going to be a cooperative game or a competitive game, and s same goes to ol oligopoly. Okay, same goes to oligopoly. And and because because of one thing because of interdependence, okay because of interdependence, you will see some conflicting in you know incentives, okay, All right yeah, you know yeah, because of this very essential element here interdependence, you will see some conflict conflicting incentives, and just like you know the examples that that we just discussed. Okay, it can be a cooperative game. It can be a competitive game. Okay, yeah. But when we talk about con conflicting incentives, the concept is almost the same. Okay, so when you are in the oligopoly, you always face the incentives to, you know, compete. Of course, you know, like a, a competition game. Okay, competitive game. All right, because you know it's just natural. For all the companies, okay, you know, any company, yeah, they just want to earn as much money as, you know, as, as they want, okay, yeah, to capture all the market share. That's the nature of all firms. So that that's normal, okay, that's normal, all right. But at the same time, if, if you think about, you know, the games that that we uh, discussed, okay, it's always good to cooperate. Or you know, in in this case, we can we can call it a collude, okay? You you know, because when when we cooperate with each other, okay, we are aiming for one common goal, okay? You know, both of us will win in the situation, okay? Yeah, you are earning money, I'm earning money, okay? We are all good. Yeah, if we are cooperating, okay, we control the output. We raise up the price. Uh, we tr we try not to make so much product differentiation. Yeah. So people. So basically, we become a monopoly. Yeah. Okay. We we cooperate. Right. You get that. Okay. So you can see, uh, because of this interdependence, you always see this uh behavior here. Okay. Some conflicting incentives. Right. Just like you know, it doesn't it doesn't only apply to uh, uh, oligopoly. It also applies to humans. Yeah, because you know we are all interdependent in this society. So when you think about yourself, pretty sure, okay, you have okay this kind of conflict in you as well. 
okay yeah you, you sometimes you might want to compete with other people but at the same time yeah you know you want to cooperate with with others yeah but but yeah you always have that incentive like like in the middle of the time you just want to compete or you know sometimes you just want to uh, collude okay all right because of the interdependence okay all right yeah so that's why you we have this concept here okay when we talk about oligopolies they always want to you know cooperate at the same time yeah that there's, there's another incentive they just want to betray other people and you know try to uh, earn the most uh, money right among you know the rest of them okay so here uh, I would like to show you a clip yeah? uh, from uh, a video yeah uh, no from a movie I can yeah I think I haven't haven't seen that movie but um, yeah so you can take a look of this movie here well, I mean, the clip of this movie. So yeah, so spend three minutes, okay, finish the clip here, and uh, try to tell me what you think. Incoming gentlemen. Stop shuffling your papers for five seconds. I will not buy you gentlemen beer. Oh, we're not here for beer, my friend. Oh. Does anyone else feel she should be moving in slow motion? Uh, <laughs> will she want a large wedding, you think? Should we say swords, gentlemen? Pistols at dawn? Have you remembered nothing? Recall the lessons of Adam Smith, the father of modern economics. In, uh, in competition, individual, individual ambition, ambition serves, serves the common good. good. Exactly. <laughs> Every man for himself, gentlemen. Yeah, and those who strike out are stuck with their friends. Yeah, I'm not going to strike out. You, you can lead a blonde to water, but you can't make a drink. I don't think he said that. All right, nobody move. She's looking over here. Right, she's looking at Nash. Oh, God. All right, he may have the upper hand now, but wait until he opens his mouth. <laughs> 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 you remember the last time? Oh, uh, yeah, that was the history book. <laughs> Adam Smith needs revision. What are you talking about? We all go for the blonde. We block each other. Not a single one of us is going to get her. So then we go for her friends. But they will all give us the cold shoulder because nobody likes to be second choice. But what if no one goes for the blonde? We don't get in each other's way, and we don't insult the other girls. And it's the only way we win. That's the only way we all get laid. <laughs> Adam Smith said the best result comes <laughs> from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself, right? That's what he said, That's right? Incomplete. Incomplete. Okay. Because the best result would come from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself and the group. Ash, this is some way for you to get the blonde on your own. You can go to hell. Governing <laughs> dynamics, gentlemen. Governing dynamics. Adam Smith. What's wrong? Yep, there we go. Careful, careful. Thank you. Okay, so uh, have you finished watching the video? Done? So, what can you tell me about the video? Yeah, so you know, 
why would I show you this video? What, what does it have? What does it have to do with what we are learning right here? Come on, you know, any comments, ideas, like what, 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 what are they talking about in the clip? Yeah, but w w when you look at the clip, okay, uh, forget about the title of the clip uh, because the title is a bit uh, incorrect. Okay, uh, it does talk about uh, game theory, but can you explain? Yeah, what 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 kind of message are they trying to express from the clip? Hello, come on. So if you have to apply the clip into conflicting in incentives, so how do you apply it? Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but but here, no. So that that and, and that's why you will see game theory can you know can be applied into many many situations. Okay. Yeah. And the situation in a bar. It also works. Okay. All right. So you know that that might be a good field trip idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If I want to get myself fired. Right. Yeah, but I think that that should be a very good field trip idea in the university level. Yeah, that'll be pretty nice. Okay, just you know, just get your students to the bar and uh, try to uh, you know get a date. Right. Yeah. It it, it 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 you know it applies to boys. It applies to to girls. Right. So you know if you are going to a bar in the future and you know you're looking for a date. Right. So do take reference from this movie here right because you know uh when when you when you look at uh the actor okay Russell Crowe right yeah you know he was playing uh a mathematician called John Nash yeah that that person is a Nobel prize winner yeah and um in that movie well ha have you guys seen that movie a beautiful mind oh wow you Okay, okay. You saw that? Well, I, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Well, maybe yeah, I'm I'm going to find it this week. I'm going to yeah. See it. All right. Yeah, I think it is should be a very good movie. Okay. But you know, in that clip, okay. Uh uh you, you know, R Russell Crowe, he showed that, look, if we compete with each other, okay? Then no one will be able to get laid. Yeah. Because, look, uh, yeah, it doesn't talk a lot about game th uh, game theory, and and that's why you know I, I told you uh, the title is, is is not it's not very correct, but 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 you know but but yeah 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 but but it's it's this guy okay John Nash who developed game theory, okay but but in that clip uh, it really showed like like how you can uh, use some of his concepts in game theory okay yeah because you know when you go to a bar when you're looking for a date and and yeah of course we are trying to look look for uh, the most handsome uh, boy or the most handsome uh, uh, I mean I mean the beautiful the most beautiful girl in the bar but you know if, if we compete with each other okay then no one will be able to get a date yeah but if we can look at the common goal yeah so a common goal is that we want to get a date in this bar alright if we can cooperate 
Okay, if we can target different people in the bar, so at the end, look, we will all get a date. Yeah, so that's that's what the clip, okay, is is talking about, right? So you could, yeah, but 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 inside, you know, the the mentality of of, of this scenario here, you you can see, even though you know, it's always good to cooperate with others. Uh, in order to you know achieve something, right? In order to 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 make the group achieve something, but deep down we always have the incentive to compete, right? Who doesn't want to date a, a beautiful girl? Or who doesn't you know want to date a, a very handsome boy, right? Yeah. So that's the conflict. Okay, that's the conflicting incentive. Okay, right? And also inside the clip, they mention one person. Who is that person? They mention one very important person in economics. Yeah, Adam Smith, right? So from from that clip, what can you tell us about Adam Smith? So what do you think Adam Adam Smith believe in? Yeah, just 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 by watching the clip, what do you, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, they they did show you some keywords, yeah, right about about Adam Smith. So there there are some beliefs that Adam Smith has, and what do you think? What do you think? You know, what is the thing that that Adam Smith appreciated uh, the most for for economics? Yeah, what do you think? Okay, C competition contributes to the goods, uh, to the good of everyone. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and that's why look, we learn about you know the beauty of competition. It's all because of Adam Smith. Adam Smith believed that competition is a very good thing to the economy. Right, because you know, we all know that because we if we have a good competition, then people they are going to lower the price, right? Because they they want to you know uh, be more competitive and yeah, they want to make something uh, even better, good quality, more variety, uh, you know, in, in your products, etc., etc. So competition is a very good thing, okay? And you know, from yeah, from now on, at least you know some of the things that that you are learning. Yeah, it's because of Adam Smith. So without Adam Smith, you don't have to learn, you know, competition. And and also, you know, competition is basically when we are talking about market economy. Okay, so Adam Smith is basically the first person uh, who believed market economy is very good for the society. Okay, when people, okay, they compete. When people, they... Uh, they you know compete you know based on the desire that they have, right? It's good, it's good for the society. All right, yeah, and uh, yeah, and that's why you learn so many uh, things about you know market economy, uh, the invisible hands, okay, even free trade. Yeah, Adam Smith believes in free trade. Okay, he believes you know there should be no government intervention or, or very uh, uh you know like least government intervention. In order to grow the economy, okay, and, and yeah, so so now you know, right? This is the guy, okay, who uh, started like modern economics, okay, all right, yeah, right. Of course, in, in the clip, uh, you know, Russell Crowe did argue that Adam Smith is incorrect, yeah, because you know, uh, well, competition that is just incomplete right we need to have you know competition but at the same time we need to look at you know how do we uh, accomplish something in a group so we also have to work with each other but you know to me I, I think uh, well you know Adam Smith there's nothing wrong with Adam Smith okay because you know from the very assumption Adam Smith he believed in um, competition so if you have a very huge competition in the market 
there's no need to work with each other, right? Yeah, based on the things that we, we, we have learned. Okay, let's say if, you, if you're putting yourself in a perfect competition, okay, or monopolistic competition, when people, they, they, they act in the, uh, independently. So there's no need to work, you know, cooperate with each other. Okay, so I would say it, 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 it really depends on which market that you are talking about or you are trying to analyze. Okay, so, so there I'm going to argue uh, uh, his statement. Okay, so you will see, right, when you study economics, you basically you just keep, you know, saying crap. Yeah, you know, you just keep arguing, like, people's idea, like, you know, you're wrong, and this, this is bad, this is good, yeah, you're right. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a very nerdy uh, subject, yeah, when it comes to uh, the university level, when you spend, like, four years trying to understand uh, the different philosophies from uh, different economists, like Adam Smith, right, John, John Keynes, and, and, yeah, so many other people, all right, yeah. So, so yeah, but anyway, okay, uh, it's good that they mention Adam Smith because, you know, in our curriculum, we don't have um, economic history. Okay, but now, so, you, you know, I, I believe you still remember, I told you that uh, starting from next year, there will be a new curriculum for economics. And finally, they put um, history in economics. Yeah, so now the students, they have to learn about uh, the more details, okay, uh, for Adam Smith and, and some other people yeah okay so you know when we talk about Adam Smith that is when we are talking about classical economics and someday later some people they uh, develop economics based on this classical economics and that's why they call that a new classical economics alright and that's why you know what, what we are learning in, in macro you know, that's one thing we call that new classical economics it's Build upon classical economics, yeah, which Adam Smith, uh, 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 you know, uh, believed. Okay, all right, yeah. I hope you uh, know a little bit more about economics here. All right, but you know that that is such a nice clip to show, uh, you know, like a basic concept of game theory that we want to talk about here. Okay, so yeah, so once again, look at this conflicting in incentives. So this is what we will always see in a market like oligopoly. Okay, all right, yeah. And feel free to watch to to watch uh, to see that movie. Okay, in your uh, spare time. Okay, if you are able to find that link, please send me as well. Right, you know, like a screaming. Well, I know that 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 sounds illegal, but uh, yeah, well, don't don't tell anyone. All right, if you be, if you are able to find that, yeah, just send me a link personally. Okay, all right, okay, all right, so all right, so now we can actually go to you know game theory, okay, all right so when when you look at this, look at this, okay, so when we talk about game theory here, okay, look at this, yeah, if you still remember prisoner's dilemma, right from uh, market failure that we talk about, okay, here we can actually apply game theory into oligopoly okay but you know you don't have to be very rigid okay so you know i just used uh, uh game theory to explain uh some of the market failure okay you know yeah when you talk about knowledge it's supposed to be more flexible but here look but here you can actually apply game theory into this concept okay so when you are writing for your uh essay you can actually draw this matrix to explain the idea of interdependence okay in, in and the conflicting incentives using this matrix here all right yeah so the concept is is just like the same uh we have learned in the market failure when we talk about prisoners uh dilemma okay so i'm not going to go through that in detail once again uh but you get but you can see this right yeah, because of, because of interdependence, right? Let's say now we have two oligopolies here, and um, you know, before we make a decision, we always have to think about you know how our opponent is going to react. Okay, so here I I made up some numbers, all right? Yeah, 
So if both of the oligopolies they decide to set up high price, okay. So when they both cooperate, okay. So look at this. This is how much they are going to earn. They are going to earn six dollars each. So that sounds pretty good, yeah. But you know, if one of the people, let's say, if if oligopoly B is lowering the price and oligopoly A is sticking with, you know, cooperating, set up a high price, then of course, because you know, lower price is more uh, more attractive to people. So you will see oligopoly B will earn most of the profits from A. So you see here, yeah. Look at this. Yeah, A is only earning one dollar, and B is earning eleven dollar. Okay, right? Yeah. So this is another situation. And at the same time, look. What if both of them they lower the price, they will both lose. Okay, because you know, yeah, they they yeah. If if they do that, what do we call it? If they both lower the price, there's a term for that. What do we call that? Anyone? Yeah, something not very uh, 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 pleasant. Yeah, when companies they all try to lower the price. What is the term? Yeah, two words. Well, let me give you some. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but um, I'm gonna give you a hint, like this. Okay, just fill in the blanks. Yeah, price war. Okay, all right. Yeah, thank you. Right. So you see here. All right. When when you know all the competitors, they are trying to lower the price. Okay, we will be in a price war, and in a price war, we know we don't want to get ourselves into the price war because we will both lose. Okay, so here is exactly telling you, we uh, when we are in a price war, we both lose. Okay, we are yeah we are both earning two dollars. All right, yeah. So, if you are an oligopoly, okay, you need to come up with some strategies. Okay, yeah, like like what should I do? Should I set up a high price? Yeah, like like should I cooperate with 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 you know uh, my opponent or should I just just lower the price, yeah. So it, it really depends on how the other uh, opponents or you know just one opponent reacts. Okay. So here, uh, you know, you can think about this. If there's any dominant strategy that one oligopoly can use, okay. So when we talk about dominant strategy, is is basically uh, is a strategy. You will, you know, you are going to stick with one strategy no matter how your opponent reacts. Okay, yeah. Whether they set up a high price or they lower the price, you are going to stick with one strategy. That is what we call a dominant strategy. Okay. All right. All right. So when when we want to look at, you know, like like how. Do we decide if if they if they have dominant strategy? It, it's very simple. So uh, I'm gonna quickly show you how it's done. Just give me a second. Okay. All right. So you know it's very easy. Um, okay. Well, well that's true. That's true. But at the same time, look, look at this. It's quite similar, Ian, actually, because when 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 you think about this, the two oligopolies, they are competitors. They are competitors. So basically, you you can imagine there's a war between you know the two of them so yeah you are going to expect the information is not complete in this case yeah you never know what they are going to do at the end 
Okay, so it's very similar to the prisoner's uh, dilemma. Okay, you know the situation uh, the two prisoners they they have. Okay, in in the interrogation room. All right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So you will see something quite similar. But uh, look at this. Okay. But first of all, look at this. Okay. So. When we have a case like this, okay, right? Yeah, we always assume because when we look at the matrix, uh, it's always good to cooperate, right? Because both of them they win, okay? If they're aiming for the same objective, yeah. If they're aiming for profit as an industry, then they will have a win-win situation, okay? Yeah. But at the same time, look at this. If they decide to compete, yeah, if yeah, if they decide to compete, okay, or you can say if if one of them they decide to betray, okay. So let's say so now we are in an agreement of uh, you know cooperation, but you know you never know when one of them they will betray. Because you know there is a huge incentive for someone to betray. Because if I betray, if I lower the price, okay, if I disregard uh, the agreement of cooperation, then I can get much more profit. So that is you know the incentive that the companies they have. But if you are thinking this way, your opponent is also thinking the same way. So at the end. Both opponents, they are going. I mean, yeah, both oligopolies, they are going to lower the price. So you know that's why you know we have an idea at the end. You know, if, if we are using prisoners' uh, dilemma, uh, they will choose the worst option, and and which is they will both lower uh, the price. Okay, but you know we we can take a look of this uh, using another uh, way. Okay, when we look at like dominant strategy. So uh, here. So when we when we when we look at dominant strategy, okay. So first of all, we want to uh, you know know if there is any way, okay. We just have to stick with one strategy, no matter how our opponent uh, reacts, okay. So let's say we are oligopoly A, okay. We are A, okay. All right, yeah. So, so there will be two scenarios. Because we are going to expect uh, oligopoly B, they will either uh, set up a high price or set up a, a low price. So we are going to put ourselves into two scenarios. Okay. So now let's say if we expect, if we expect oligopoly B is going to set up a high price. Okay. So uh, B. So that's uh, case one. Yeah, case one. That's case one. Okay, high price, right? If A is also setting up a high price, so I'm just going to use this to represent like high price. Okay, so how much A is going to earn from this? So yeah, so now in case one, we assume B is going to set up high price, and if we are A and we, you know, using high price as well. How much we are going to earn? Can you just type the number in the chat? So look at look at the matrix here. How much A is going to earn if this is the case? If B is setting up a high price and and look, look, if, if B is setting up a high price and we are also setting up a high price, okay, all right, so which will be, look, here, look, because, you know, on the red, yeah, that's A, and on the blue, that's, that's B, okay, so, you know, if both of them, they are setting high price, so A is going to earn $6 right here. Okay. All right. So six dollars. 
right here. Okay, and oh, at the same time, if this is case one, and we decide to uh, lower the price. So in this scenario, how much we are going to earn? So B is going to, you know, we, we, we assume B is going to set up a high price and now we are going to set up a low price. So how much we are going to earn? Yeah, 11. Yeah, exactly. Right here. Uh, here. Okay, here. All right, yeah. Right, when B is setting up a high price, okay, this is our assumption, okay, and now look, and we have two options here, right, now we decided to lower the price, so A is going to earn $11. Okay, when, when you look at the matrix, okay, uh, it's, it's always going to be arranged this way, okay, uh, you know, because, you know, uh, oligopoly A represents the X axis, and B represents the y-axis so this is x this is y x y x y x y okay all right yeah okay all right so in this case uh yeah it's going to be eleven dollars all right so there you go yeah and then we'll go to case two well but before we go to case two look at this if this is case one which strategy will give us more you know return which strategy if we are in case one which one will give us more return which one we should use yeah we, we yeah we should compete we should lower the price okay so i would say yeah here that's that's good all right yep that's very good okay so now case two now let's assume b is going to set up uh, uh you know a, a low price Okay, low price here, and once again, uh, we do the same, uh, you know, analysis. So let's say in in case two, uh, B is going to set up a low price, and what if we set up a high price? How much are we going to earn? If this is the case, how much are we going to earn? Okay, we are going to earn one dollar in this case. Yeah, and then we'll go to another case when we are uh, setting up a low price. So how much are we going to earn if I set up a low price in this case? Yeah, two, right? Yeah, right here. Okay, right here. Yeah, two. Okay, so once again, which one should I pay? in case two in order to maximize my benefit in case two yeah you know yeah lower the price okay so here okay right so you see here do you see it in both case one and case two we will be better off if we lower the price okay so that's that's the option we are going to stick with and that is what we call a dominant strategy okay because you know from the analysis here we know it's going to be lowering the price because if I lower the price look it doesn't really matter uh, 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 you know how my opponent is going to react I'm going to earn the most benefit okay right yeah whether it's case one or case two I'm going to earn the most money the most benefit okay right and that's why that that's what we call a dominant strategy but you know right now in my uh, 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 you know in my made up numbers okay uh, you know they are pretty much identical for um, uh, oligopoly A and B so you assume oligopoly B they would think the same okay they would think the same so at the end the result from oligopoly B will be the same 
as oligopoly A. Okay, all right, yeah. So this is the kind of assumption that that we make for the behavior of oligopoly. So at the end, both of them, they are going to choose lowering the price. Okay, and that's why, see here, lowering the price is the dominant strategy for both A and B in this case. Of course, in the reality, uh, you know, it's, it's not always going to be like this. Okay, I, I mean the numbers, yeah? You know, the numbers in the matrix that you see. In the reality, you know, the numbers, they can be uh, very different, okay? But, you know, when we are trying to study oligopoly, okay, academically, this is, you know, the kind of assumption that we make, all right? Yeah, so we, we will assume a behavior like this, okay? All right, yeah? So at the end, at the end, you know, it, it, it will be just like prisoner's dilemma. Okay, yeah. You know, just like what I what I told you, they all have that uh, incentive to betray, because they they will you know earn much more money. They will earn much more profits if they do that. Okay, even though they know if if they all cooperate uh, with each other, there will be a win-win situation. Yeah, but we are just not satisfied with what we will get in this case we just want to earn more and more money so at the end we use a dominant strategy here okay and as the result we will say we will see a Nash equilibrium okay so Nash all right J that's the name from uh, you know the clip you just watched okay yeah John Nash right he developed this concept here okay uh, and uh, so in Nash equi equ equilibrium, it, it means look, neither of the oligopoly has the incentive to change their strategy. Okay, so if they don't have if they don't have incentive to change their strategy, then we will call that Nash equilibrium. Okay, it doesn't always have to be you know both of them if they don't change their strategy. Okay, as long as you know there's there's one of them. Uh, they will not change uh, their strategy. Then we will call that Nash equilibrium. Okay, so we can we can see Nash equilibrium individually. Okay, but in this case, because we know that both A and B, they are going to stick with this strategy here. So we will say, from here we can see a Nash equilibrium. Okay, because you know, yeah, there's no way they will change their strategy based on the analysis that we made okay right because if I keep my price low that's the best option I'm not going to you know raise up my price because that is just not rational okay all right so there's there's no incentive for me to change my strategy okay all right any questions Cool? Okay. All right. Okay. So. Well, I just, uh, you know, made up some some other uh, numbers. And uh, so let's say uh, this is an, an exercise. Okay. And I want you to, uh, you know, quickly finish this. All right. So it's just another game theory exercise. Okay. With different numbers. Okay. With a different matrix. Okay, it's about you know Pepsi and Coca Cola. All right, so uh, two questions. Okay, so first of all, yeah, do you find a dominant strategy for Pepsi and Coca Cola? That's one. And second of all, do you find a Nash equilibrium in Pepsi and Coca Cola? Okay, so uh, yeah, I, th I think you can um, finish this very quickly. Okay. So yeah, so now I'm gonna give you some time to finish, right? So if you have uh, finished it, all right, you can you know just show me the answers.
Uh, any questions on um, the exercise here? Yeah, I think we are going to go through uh, the exercise next week. Yeah, but you know, try to finish the two questions for now. So anyone who has finished the question still doing? Okay, right. So uh, it's time's up. Okay, all right. Uh, and I will talk about this exercise next week. All right. So you know you can go now. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Okay. Bye.